I've reviewed a lot of audio interfaces on this channel, and this might just be the best one. Under $300, let's find out why. Hi, I'm Ed from edthorn.com, here to try and help you guys make the most out of your home studios. And obviously, in our home studios, we need an audio interface of some kind. The Audient ID series of audio interfaces represent fantastic value for money given the quality and the features they host compared to other audio interfaces in the same price range. The ID14 Mark I was probably the best all-round interface in this video comparing 10 of the top audio interfaces available for under $300. And there was some stiff competition in that video. And the ID14 Mark II goes a long way to further solidify this audio interface as the best in its class. During the course of this video, be sure to comment below with the features that you find the most exciting. So what's new in this model? The Mark II is a very well-built device housed in the same solid and robust metal casing as the Mark I, but finished in a sleek and attractive gunmetal grey. The Mark I required an external power supply to operate phantom power. Audient have made the Mark II more power efficient, and the whole device now runs on USB bus power, including the phantom power. The Mark II has been upgraded for speed to a USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 connection. A USB-C to C cable is supplied, but the device also works with a USB-C to A cable. The Mark II boasts improved converters on what were already very good converters, offering an additional 5 decibels of dynamic range to the audio to digital conversion end, and an additional 9 decibels to the digital to audio conversion end, providing a total of 120 and 126 decibels respectively. To put this into context, the Focusrite Scarlett has an input dynamic range of 111 decibels and an output dynamic range of 104 decibels on the headphones and 108 decibels on the monitor outputs so the Audient ID14 is blowing this out of the water in terms of dynamic range. So what does this mean? It means the input and output converters have more headroom between the quietest signal they can capture and the loudest signal before they fail to accurately reproduce the audio or digital signal properly which can cause that horrible digital clipping distortion sound. I was slightly surprised Audion didn't upgrade the Mark II converters to offer 192 kHz sample rates to bring it in line with most of the other interfaces in this price range. However, this doesn't really matter. The 96 kHz sample rate this device offers still covers a frequency range of 48 kHz before aliasing, which is far beyond the human hearing range of 20 kHz. To find out more about what this is exactly, I've put together this video here as a brief explanation of what is actually quite a complicated subject. I've linked that in the description below. This version is fitted with two extra outputs and two headphone sockets capable of powering headphones with an impedance of up to 600 ohms, but more on both of these features later. The level meter LEDs on the Mark II are now all white or red at clipping. The monitor, ID and headphone buttons are also white. I used to quite like the yellow and green function buttons on the Mark I and also the input metering traffic light system. Although these are viewable in the mixer software, I'd have quite liked these on the device. If at any point you consider purchasing this device, I've placed links in the description for your convenience to find more information. Purchasing through these links is a great way to support the channel if you found value in this review. The ID14 is designed with desktop use in mind for easy access to all of its physical features. To find out about the great software features that make this the best audio interface in its price range, be sure to stick around till the end of the video. The input gain pots feel solid and move smoothly, offering a gentle increase in gain. The larger monitor level pot is stepped, but volume increases are also smooth. This button doubles up as a mute button, independently for both the line outs and the headphone amp. For me, this single feature sets this device above all the others in the price range. The 48 volt phantom power levers are physical secure feeling switches. My initial concern for these would be that they'd be quite easy to move turning your phantom power on and off which is not ideal if you have a ribbon mic, however this simply isn't the case. Similarly to the Mark I, the ID button is assignable to an array of cool features including mono selection, which is great for referencing a mix between stereo and mono, dim if you need to reduce your output volumes whilst an artist is recording, Talkback, which is useful if your artist is tracking in another room, and Alt for switching between two sets of speakers. 
The ID button can also be assigned to utilize the large volume dial as an indoor scroll wheel. It's quite a nifty feature. The headphone amp hosts both mini and quarter inch jack connections. Although these can't be controlled independently, they can be operated simultaneously without a noticeable reduction in volume when using low impedance headphones. The output signal is crystal clear all the way up to maximum output where the device informs you it is clipping with red LEDs on the level meter. At this point, a small amount of digital distortion creeps in, but there's plenty of headroom before this point. My 25 ohm Austrian Audio High X55 headphones highlighted the quality in the top end of the headphone amp, and my 64 ohm Sennheiser HD300 Pros really highlighted the clarity and depth of sound in the low end. The headphone amp handled my 300 ohm Sennheiser HD600 headphones comfortably, although I was using most of the available output. The monitor outputs are monstrous, boasting a thunderous low end and a really good clarity and detail all the way through to the top end. Much like the headphone outputs, the monitor outputs are very good quality. You can clearly hear the quality in the improved digital to audio converters. Both ID14 Marks 1 and 2 have quite advanced monitoring systems in their ID mixer application. Stick around till the end and we'll go through that in a little bit more detail. The mic inputs have an input gain of 58 decibels and the ID mixer software boasts a 10 decibel digital gain boost, effectively giving you 68 decibels of input gain. This is impressive. However, with most audio interface preamps like this, they start to introduce a floor circuit noise towards the top 10% of their preamps input gain. On this device, the input is clean all the way up until about here when the noise starts creeping in. With the input gain set here, the digital gain boost is really useful to amplify the clean signal. So you can actually back off the input gain a little bit, giving you ample headroom to run a dynamic microphone such as the Shure SM7B I'm using for this video. Just so you're aware, I'm recording all the audio for this video through this device, and I think you'll agree it sounds crisp and clean. Hey, if you're finding value in this video, please hit that like button and why not do it right away while you remember. It really helps YouTube recognize the video so more people can benefit from this review. The direct input and line inputs have 40 decibels of gain, both with the additional 10 decibel digital boost available. These are very typically audient, clean sounding inputs without any audible noise or hissing. Now, having recently reviewed the Evo Start Recording Bundle, which comes with the Evo 4 audio interface, I kind of wish Audient had implemented the Smart Gain feature found on that device in this device. It's a really cool feature to get consistent input gain. I found it very accurate and actually quite helpful. I guess you can't have everything though, but if you want to watch the full review of the Evo Start Recording Bundle, click on the link for this video in the description below. <laughs> Audient have teamed up with Steinberg to give you the Cubase 3 digital audio workstation or door for you to produce your music in. They've also teamed up with G4 Software, Subito Piano, Waldorf Audio and Two Notes to give you an extensive sample library of instrument sounds and guitar cab simulations to create music right away. In addition to this, Audient have partnered with the Produce Like a Pro Academy to give you three free recording and mixing tuition courses usually only available to Produce Like a Pro Academy members. Warren Hewitt and the Produce Like a Pro Academy YouTube channel offer a wealth of invaluable information and these three courses are worth the value of this audio interface alone. The ID14 is ADAT expandable. This means you can add an extra eight channel inputs into your studio setup with the simple addition of an ASP800 or ASP880 rack mounted preamp unit like this one. These additional ADAT inputs are individually adjustable in your monitor or headphone mixers using the ID mixer software. If you're considering expanding your recording setup at some point to incorporate more instrumentalists or recording drums, this is a great device to enable you to do that in the future. Most interfaces in this price range don't come with ADAT expandability. The two extra outputs on the rear of the interface enable us to connect either an additional set of speakers for reference mixing or external hardware if you want to run your mixers through analog EQs and compressors and then simply route the outputs from those back into the line inputs on the ID14. Much like Audience recent Evo 4 audio interface, which has a built-in loopback feature, the ID mixer software that comes with the ID14 Mark II can be used in a similar way to loop back and route your audio, suitable for live streaming, podcasting, gaming, and live mixing sessions whilst recording voiceovers and avoiding any feedback. 
The most exciting part of this interface, both marks one and two for me, is actually the ID mixer software and the potential monitoring options this device gives us. The monitoring functionality on this interface is far superior to anything else in this price range. In the mixer app, we have our mic and line inputs, digi channels, which are our external ADAT inputs, and our door inputs numbered one to six. Why do you need six door inputs? Great question. This is where we can set up multiple channel or bus sends from our door into the mix application to fine tune our monitor mixers. For example, in this vocal session for a song I'm working on, I have the drum bus sent to door one and two. These are stereo linked. Bass to door three, keys to door four and panned a little bit right. Guitars to door five and panned hard right. Then click to door six and kept central. Then I pan my vocal input slightly to the left for some stereo separation. This is just an example of the flexibility this system provides. If we go into system panel, we can route our analog outputs. My main stereo master bus mix is going to physical outputs one and two on the ID14. We can use outputs three and four for reference monitoring on a second set of speakers. The old speaker setting is a duplicate of the main mix setting. Then we have QMix A and B. Q mixers are our headphone mixers and work similarly to how an auxiliary send would work in a live music setting. By default, ID14 is set to send QA to the headphone output, but we could also use outputs three and four to send a Q to a headphone amp to an artist in a vocal booth or live room, and QB to an artist in the same room without having to rebalance the main monitor mix. If we're using an ADAT expansion unit such as the ASP880, we can also monitor with these inputs and set a mix according to each performer. A very thorough explanation of the ID Mixer software is available on the Audient YouTube page. I'll link that in the description. And finally, you can save and load monitor presets for different artists and recording setups. Excellent. Stay tuned for a direct comparison between the Audient ID14 Mark II and the Universal Audio Apollo Twin. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when that video comes out. Let me know which features you like the most in the comments below. Thanks for watching, be kind to one another, check out another video here, and I'll see you all on the next one.